But some people have already made their minds up on Delict and Mazuri. Tony sends a message here. Delict failed at Juventus and Bayern Munich. Mazuri wasn't a big hit either. So who else is chasing one or both of those players? Says uh, Tony. Graham Soonis alongside Simon and myself. Here's the thing. He knows the players. Signing players you know, Graham. I mean, can trust ever trump quality. What he knows what he's going to get in these two, he thinks. Yeah, but he knew what he was going to get from the other ones he brought from from Ajax. And I don't think anyone's jumping up and down and saying how fabulous they've been. Well, I'm I, I'm doubtful about Delict. Sorry, he didn't didn't get into the national team during the Euros. Squad member. You know, when, when you look at when you look at a player's profile, he's been at two enormous football clubs, two enormous football clubs. Okay, maybe UV slightly different in the modern game. Normally don't like to sell players. They hold on to the best players. Bayern Munich certainly hold on to the best players. And I think that, that in itself tells a story. That that chap that was talking about him before, yeah. he, he was a, a boy, he was a star when he was a boy. Um, has he progressed since then? I, 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 am, I, am, I am not sure if he is what Man United need at this time. Really. Uh, I mean, I look at Johnny Evans last year played 23 times for Man United. Mm. He's, he's, he's 36 years old. They definitely need a centre half. Yeah. It's Delict. When I look at Delict, I'm a lightweight centre half. Yeah, can play, but can he do the. Lightweight? The, yeah, can he do the things that. What do you want from your centre half first and foremost? Defend. Yeah. That seems to have gone out of the game now. It's, it would appear that some coaches. Stroke managers think it's all about being able to pull out from the back. Keep the ball at the back of your net. I see him as a goalkeeper. You know, it's this goalkeeper Man United got. Is he any better than the goalkeeper the Spanish boy they sold or, or allowed to walk out the door? He wasn't good with his feet, but he kept the ball at the net better than Onano does. Yeah. See, already, Simon, I mean, and obviously, Graham knows his stuff about these players. Delict, Mazarui, <laughs> already there are question and, marks and about and them. They're the not even teams, there yet. Ask yourself that. Was there a queue from the other big teams wanting to buy these players? And we, we, Man United are the biggest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the answer is there appears to be no queue. Yeah, I mean, towards the end of his time at Bayern Munich, he seems to be sitting on a bench at Bayern Munich as well. I mean, we saw the Dutch defend against England and they weren't great defensively, were they? Um, certainly not in the first half. And so he's not getting into that, that Dutch side that wasn't great defensively. Yeah. So I'm not sure what it tells you. I mean, the question is slightly mischaracterised. <laughs> You should buy quality that you know. <laughs> in the ideal world, in the ideal world, you don't buy someone that you know because you know them. That's you buy them the because ideal, they're good enough. The ideal world. That is the ideal world. You've, you've worked on them before. You know they're top dollar. They're going to come in and be a really good player for you. Yeah, that's I mean, not sure, happened so far. Surely the best the scenario game is that you buy a player that you trust. But the ones he's brought in so far from Ajax have not been that. Not at that level. I mean, yes, of course you should buy players that you invariably trust or have a relationship with if you can. But primarily, what's the point of buying someone that you trust that happens to be bleeding useless? That's of no use to anyone, no man the beast, is it? You're talking about Manchester United. We need someone, or they need somebody that can come into that side, that can forge a relationship so he's got a balance in the dressing room with people that he can turn to, that can represent him on the field so he doesn't need to do certain jobs as senior pros that Graham um, endlessly alludes to that are key components of dressing rooms. But they need to have the quality as well, Yeah, not just the trap. Yeah. Jordy Stew, Graham, who's going to end up higher up in the Premier League at the end of the season? Newcastle or Manchester United? Right now? Yeah. I think Newcastle. And I mean, is, is I, I, that I, even with Delict and Mazarou yeah, in the door? Yeah, I, I come back to There's no queue around the block for those two. You know, they're not having to outbid anyone to get them. They will pay a premium because they're Man United. Yeah. I think Newcastle are a, are a team where there's a feel-good factor up there right now with Eddie. And um, you know, the, the crowd are quite special up there when the team's going. And if it's more of the same for them, then you expect them to... Have a better year in the league mm. than they did last year. It's about one, two, three, four messages from Manchester City fans. What about us? Okay, Manchester City. I mean, Simon, with Guardiola entering the final year of his contract, alongside those 115 charges, um, could this season be the beginning of some kind of a turning point, do you think, for the recent dynamic? In, in terms of what? I mean, Manchester City losing their way. Mm. Uh, first and foremost, I don't think Pep Guardiola, if he were to leave, is the sort of person would want to leave, leaving people wanting less from him <laughs> he'll leave you wanting more and that is ultimately the sort of manager that he is so I wouldn't suggest that if he is going to the last year of his contract which clearly he is and he's already intimated himself that he may well be staying at Manchester City and extend beyond that but even if that were the case he's the sort of guy that leaves you wanting more as far as the 115 charges well they are what they are 
and they'll come the way that they come. And I think that they will take some time to find their way to the surface in terms of all the processes that come through. We've already seen, I spoke um, um, a few times, and we've had the Oracle Stefan Borson tell us about how long this will take. I think this won't be determined this season. Um, but even if it were, I'm not entirely sure that, that there won't be a deal done to damage limitate the outcome, even if Man City were found to be culpable for the charges that I think that they are facing legitimately. Yeah. So at the end of the day, Graham, it's uh, as you were. Do you think yeah. Manchester City will continue where they left off? I, I, I'm, I've got a sneaky feeling for Arsenal this year. So do I. So do I. De Bruyne is influential Wayne. He's at that age now where he's going to get muscle injuries. As fabulous as he's been, that will Wayne. Um, the big centre forward, Hallen, will get goals wherever he plays. Yeah. He might get them out of the river time and time again. They will still be... For me, it's it's between Arsenal and City. City won't be far away. You know why? Because he, he's got so many good players. They he, he can rotate them, you know. And he and he's he's not shy in doing that. He's putting them. It's it's a bit like when I played at Liverpool all those years ago. The biggest fear you had as a Liverpool player was being left out because it's such a strong squad. And I think the motivation it can't always be words from the manager or threats from the manager about you've got to be on it because you get left out. It has to come from. The squad itself, where you've got so much quality, but that bet. in itself is a motivation. I, I wouldn't bet against Man City, but I wouldn't be surprised. Arsenal have closed the gap. The margins last year were a couple of performances against Aston Villa. They did. They, I think they took four points off Manchester City. I think they proved themselves. Their advancement has been that they closed the gap between the previous season. They weren't in ascendancy during the course of the season, so they can't have the claim that they were pulled back and bottled it, which they did do in the season where they were clear of Man City. And I think that this is the next logical step. This is the next logical step. Right. I think I think there's a possibility. You the other day. You stayed with City. No, because you grabbed Arsenal first. I didn't get a chance. <laughs> <laughs> you taking Arsenal to win it, Graham? Yeah, I'm a, I've not even kicked a ball. You know, you, when you factor in injuries over the season to key men, you know that could that that alone could dictate where the title goes. But I just think if all if they have the equal amount of luck in terms of during games yeah. equal amount of luck in terms of injuries yeah I think I think Arsenal are capable of winning it there's yeah. Rob being very cheeky and quite brave Graham told us England would dominate the Euros so Manchester United yeah. are nailed on to finish above Newcastle are they? I didn't say nailed on no so I didn't say nailed on and I I did tip England to win the Euros like a lot of other football people did yeah. I, if, we, if we only spend a, uh, half a minute talking about England they were they were so poor you know, so poor. It was attritional. It was boring, and those none of those players, none of them came back thinking I had a good Euros. Jim White and Simon Jordan, Monday to Friday mornings from ten on AM on DAB via the Talksport app and on your smart speaker. Talksport.